Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be doing a Q&A and I'm gonna be doing my makeup outside while I do it. We're not gonna be chatting products or anything like that. I'm just gonna be doing my makeup, answering your guys' questions. I asked on Instagram and Twitter for you guys to ask anything that you wanted to know and I got a lot of good questions. So we're just gonna hop into it and chat and hang out. It is a beautiful day. We just got over a horrific heat wave here in Washington. It was like nothing I've ever seen living here for 33 years. I've never seen anything like it, so. But before we hop into your guys' questions, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Schmitz. And if you don't know who Schmitz is, they make a natural deodorant. And they reached out to me a few months ago and asked me if I'd like to try out their product and see if I liked it. And then if I did, I would chat with you guys about it. It's so weird how much the chemistry of your body can change. Like after having my baby, I developed body odor. I don't know what started it all of a sudden, Sudden, but I started getting night sweats and I just I frankly I kind of stink I have never really had to wear a lot of deodorant throughout my life because I just really never had a lot of BO but now I definitely do and I don't know it's been for like the last seven months I've just noticed that I can't get away with not wearing a deodorant anymore so when I did switch to one I wanted it to be a more natural deodorant and Schmitz is aluminum free and they're made with essential oils so the fragrances of them are very natural very nice they're not overwhelming they're not overpowering I have a headache condition so since are something that I'm very picky about for something like this you want to be able to smell it but you just for me I don't want to smell something that's like gagging me all day long that's too overwhelming of a scent and these are not that because they are made with essential oils I just find that they smell natural but not too earthy they just smell good the one that I use the coconut and kale and clay that one sort of to me if I could like put my finger on what it smells like it's almost kind of fruity pebblesy, but not overwhelming. It's very, very nice smelling. And my husband, he agrees. We got a few different scents and that one was the one that he agreed on that was like, that one was one of the nicest scents. And then the one that he has gone with is the sage and vetiver. And that one is a very, I, I don't know, it smells woodsy and earthy, but not overpowering it's very very nice scent it's not that artificial fragrance you know what i'm talking you know what i'm talking about they say 24 hour odor protection and i have never had any breakthrough bo at all neither has my husband and he is somebody that is like an avid deodorant wearer he wears it every single day he's never misses a day and so that's why we wanted to switch to a more natural deodorant just because it is something that he's putting on his body all the time and we just wanted it to be a little bit better for us if we could and so he loves it he absolutely loves it and he's so picky with deodorant he's gone through at least 10 different kinds tried natural deodorants and he loves schmidt all schmidt's deodorants are 100 percent cruelty free vegan you guys can find them in most major stores you can find them at target amazon schmidt's.com if you guys are interested in checking out schmidt's i'm going to have them linked in the description of this video and you guys can check out all the different scents that they have i'm so glad they reached out because i was looking for something like this and it came at the perfect time for both zach and i so thank you so much to schmidt's for sponsoring this video and now we are going to hop into the q a and i'm going to answer you guys questions and See what you want to know. My hair is going to be the death of me. Heaven help. I tried doing a uh, side part because I've been doing middle parts forever. I tried doing a side part. I hate it with my entire heart. It's just in my face. It's driving me nuts. So I'm going to try to like clip it back or something or do something with it because it's driving me bananas. First question is what are your plans for life after YouTube? Well, it's hard to see a life after YouTube because I don't know that there will be an after YouTube or if it will just transition as I grow. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna probably be doing this for like the next 20 years or anything, but I've already been doing it for about 10 years. So I, I never saw myself doing it for this long, not because I don't like it, I love it. I literally love YouTube so much, but because I never thought there would be any sort of like job or money that came out of this, I, like literally ever. I started this just as a hobby. So I don't know if there is an after YouTube or if it would just kind of transition as my life changes. Like I'm, I'm probably not gonna be doing cut creases when I'm 50, but you never know, you never know. But you know, for me, I don't necessarily see an after. Uh, I really love our second channel. God help me if I've even uploaded to it. I know it's so terrible. I want to, I want to upload to it twice a week. It's just been so hard. I don't know how anyone gets anything done at all. I mean, I just, I, I admire people so much. I have multiple children because I have one and I don't know how anyone gets anything done. <laughs> so this is a big question and one that I've never actually answered on my YouTube channel before. I've kind of avoided it, but at this point in my life, I don't feel it's necessary to avoid anymore. And that is what does my husband do for work? So before he was an independent contractor who did like non-destructive testing. So like on dams, at an oil refinery, um, at school, basically anywhere where there's like 
metal or piping or like vessels that needed inspection, that was what he did. So he would inspect them with a ultrasound. So basically he was an ultrasound technician, but he wasn't like a doing it on pregnant bellies or anything. He was doing it on like vessels and things that needed to be seen through like with um, automated UT and phased array. So that was what he did for like, I don't know, eight, 10 years or something like that. Most of our lives together. And a few years ago, we were actually in Mexico with Pure Cosmetics and BoxyCharm. He, we were having a conversation with some of the other influencers' husbands that were there and they were asking him about his job and he really wasn't that happy at the job. It wasn't safe. It's not a very safe job at all. And we just never saw each other. And my YouTube channel was taking off to a point where it was becoming feasible for us to have him help me work on this full time and um but it was scary it's a really scary leap to take because it's not guaranteed you know it's not like a guaranteed job where you make guaranteed money and you have a set schedule you know if you if hello i'm talking if something you know doesn't go well or if you know you don't get as many views or if maybe you know something happened no and so it was always really scary to take the jump for having him work with me full time this was back in 2017 i believe and basically we were on that trip and he was talking to some of the other guys that were there and they were like, you know, it was the best decision that we made. Take the leap because all that time that you spend doing that thing that you're not super in love with and that takes up all your time and that is even dangerous and you're not super excited about it, you could be spending doing something that you love and working with your wife on, you know, different projects and things like that. And we talked about it and talked and talked and it was a huge decision and he decided to put in his notice at work. And this was in, I think, March or April of 2017 and start working with me full time. So Zach actually edits my videos and I taught him how to edit. Um, I do the final edit. He does like the rough edit and like all the little funny things that you see put in, that's all him. I do like the final edit and then now we stay at home and when I'm filming and things like that, he's being a dad to our little baby. Yeah, I never mentioned it online because while it was the biggest blessing of my life and it was honestly one of the best decisions that we've ever made. I didn't want the internet to have anything negative to say about something that was so wonderful. Um, I was just really excited about him being able to stay home and work with me and get to spend that time together. And it's been wonderful. We work fantastically together. That was something that we were really nervous about. Like, are we gonna fight more? Or are we gonna be, like, are we gonna work well together? And we have worked great together. I mean, honestly, sometimes we're at each other's throats. I mean, but that's just life. But it's been the biggest blessing of our lives and being able to stay home together and work together and be here with our baby. Like, it is not lost on us. We are so happy. And the reason I have I never talked about it before or like shared about it was just because I was a little worried that people on the internet would have something negative to say about it and I didn't want it to taint that for us but now it's been a long enough that I mean it's been since 2017 it's 2021 so we're good <laughs> but yeah that's what he does he works with me he edits my YouTube videos and uh, we do other things as well like we work on the second channel he does a lot of editing for the second channel and filming and stuff like that for our sweet life of Zach and Christy channel which is like homesteading gardening home remodel DIY type of content cooking stuff like that. And he's safe now. He doesn't have to do this super dangerous job. He was like, he does like rope access. So he was a rope access technician as well. So he was the guy that you see like working on a bridge and like in a harness and ropes, like hanging off the bridge. It's kind of hot. I'm not, not going to lie. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really dangerous. And every day that he went to work, I would fear for his life because I have heard of and seen some very, very scary things that have happened to people in his same line of work. And it's just been great to not have to stress about that. So another one of the biggest questions that I get asked, it, I, I probably got it asked 150 times uh, on this questionnaire. And that is why do I not use my son's name on YouTube? And why do I call him my baby? And why in my stories and stuff like that do I say my baby or my son? So it's no secret that I dealt with postpartum depression and anxiety after having my son way better now. In fact, I do, I do wanna mention though that it's so interesting. I don't know if it's called like, pe uh, what is it called? Uh, PPMD or PP something I can't remember uh, it's interesting though when I get my cycle now after having him I get a resurgence of like depression around my period and then it totally goes back to normal like I feel completely fine 100% myself in all the other days but right around my period I feel like really down and really um, weepy and just a little bit hopeless and then as soon as my period is over I go completely back to feeling fine it's really bizarre and I've never experienced I always had like a bit of like PMS before but this is like 
on another level. So it's no secret that I dealt with postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety. Mine was never that severe in the depression side. It was more like in the anxiety. I was a really, really, really severe in the postpartum anxiety. And so the reason I bring this up is because in mentioning that I had had my baby online, so many people were like, I can't wait to hear his name, can't wait to hear his name. And I had never intended on actually sharing his name online. I wanted to keep his anonymity. I wanted to give him the ability to share that information himself when he has social media in the future, if he decides to have that. I never wanted to choose that for him. And because he has a kind of unique name, I didn't want to spread it all over the internet and you know have a bunch of people see that and then potentially look him up and all that different stuff. But 10 days postpartum, I was, was getting so many people reaching out and saying like, I really can't wait to hear his name. Oh my gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait. And I went against my gut and I shared a photo of him with his name on Instagram. And it's fine, it's literally fine, but I did not like the way I felt after doing that. I went against my gut and said, you know what? It's fine, it's fine. And I I shared that. And it, there, there's no secret. Like, I'm not trying to keep it secret. I'm not like, oh, nobody knows. There's a lot of people out there that do know what the name is and everything like that. It has nothing to do with that. It was just that I didn't like that I went against my gut and did something that I had planned on not doing because of like social pressure. And that is why I don't share. Not because I'm not, like I care so much if people know and oh my gosh, it's not that, it's nothing like that. It's not that I am trying to be super secretive or anything like that. I just don't like that I went against my gut and shared this information when I initially had planned not to. And it made me say like, I'm not gonna go against my gut anymore because that, I didn't like that I had shared something because of pressure instead of like my genuine want to share. And so for me, I went against my gut then and I'm not gonna go against it now. And it kind of bothers people sometimes that I don't say his name. I love his name and I love the story behind it and I love everything like that. But it's, it's, it's nothing like that. It's really just that I went against my gut and I said, I'm not gonna do that again. And I'm not. So that's really it. There's no like deeper meaning behind it other than I don't think millions of people need to know. <laughs> you know, it, it, what are people doing with that information at the end of the day? My baby and my son, I think is adequate. And um, it's just what I feel comfortable with at the time. I might change that in the future, but as of now, it's what I feel comfortable with. Editing Christy here. So to expand upon this, I just also wanted to say that I've even had a few people, not a few, a lot of people kind of demanding to know more about him and show him and show us his name. And that's like why I don't want to. Um, I don't owe the internet my baby. I don't know. It's just really weird. Some people are very demanding and so many of you aren't and so many of you get this. Um, but even just yesterday, I had somebody on Twitter just being so bizarre about it. Like, why do you only call him my baby? He's not just your baby. He's his own person. Like, duh, I know that. But why do you care so much? You know, there he is back there. He's upset about it too. After I'd gone against my gut and done that, I my postpartum anxiety got way worse and I was like, I'm never doing this again. I had some DMs and people being like, oh, they could look him up. And it was just, I, I, it just hits different when it's, you know, somebody you care so much about, so. Somebody asked, now that you have a catio, why don't you bring the stray cats with you? First of all, it's not a an area at all big enough for cats to live their full lives. So if you didn't know, which I think a lot of you probably do, at our old house, we were taking care of these stray cats and feeding them and everything like that outside. And I got them all neutered and spayed. We didn't bring them with us. And there was a big reason we didn't bring them with them. And that is because they are feral outdoor cats. They're not super friendly at all. Like you can't sit around and pet them. They're not that kind of cat. Like they're the kind of cat you can feed and you could touch their back, but they like wince away from you. They kind of hate it the whole time. A lot of people wonder why we didn't bring them. And the main reason is because there are predators out here. There are bears, coyotes. We've seen uh, bobcats, cougars. Like it's not an area you want outside cats at all in any, by any stretch of the imagination. Like we see piles of fur all the time from animals that get eaten out here. So we didn't want to bring them out here. So what we did is actually rented our last house to the one that we just moved out of to my sister and her fiance, they take care of the cats for us, which is really, really great. They are well cared for over there. They get fed, built them a spot on the porch where they can sleep if they choose to. And it's just been great having them take care of them and they're all doing well and they get their canned food every day and their dry food and it's been really great. So people will ask why we don't bring them here and like, you know, honestly, that's their home. That's where they grew up. And I don't think that they want to come here. They would be stuck in an indoor outdoor area that's attached to our house. They're, they pee everywhere because they're feral 
male tomcats. I mean, they're, they're neutered, but still. So that is the reason why, and they're happy over there, and our cats don't like them, so it's just really a situation of like, it's just been better to leave them where they, where they live. And that's that. Some people ask how Zach and I get along so well post baby. Uh, well, we never, ever, ever snapped at each other really at all, ever before having him, ever. And then we had a baby and we, in the first at least like five months, probably fought more, not like fought, like we're not like fighting around him or anything like that, but we snapped at each other and argued more than I think in like the 15 years that we were together prior. <laughs> like, we just don't argue that often, but there's just something about the sound of a crying baby in the background of already frustrated sleep sleep deprivation where you are like, just, there's you're, you're, you have this much patience left and you might end up taking it out on each other. And I know that we did. We definitely took it out on each other and, is that Scrubby? He's happy? Good. Um, we definitely took it out on each other. We still do. Like if we're at our wits end and we're struggling, it it's unfortunately it just ends up being at each other because we're not going to yell at the baby, obviously. And that's what's really hard is I don't like that because it feels like a bit of a strain on our relationship sometimes. But we always, at the end of the day, come back and talk to each other and apologize. It's just in those moments, like there are a few things that are harder to listen to than a crying baby or a whining baby baby and when you're hearing that all day long and stretching yourselves thin and you're already sleep deprived and you're not getting enough t like quality time together and you don't have any help or anything like that it just wears on you and so we are not perfect in that regard at all like we've definitely still argue uh but you know we're just doing our best and realizing that this season is probably in the grand scheme of things pretty short and that hopefully we won't be like this forever because you know they're only this little for so long and then it gets to the point where you can like have conversations with them and redirect and you know teach and right now when he's upset or there's something that he wants he's crying he doesn't know how to you know communicate with us other than that and that is like kind of a noise that i am not like if i i hate the sound of whining and i it's really really hard to hear that sound all day every day and then not snap at somebody else when they go to talk to you dude being outside and doing my makeup right out here has it makes it look as though i've never done makeup before it just looks so bad in this lighting probably the third most common question that i've gotten is about our sex life post baby <laughs> um a lot of people just want to know about it and if it's better or worse um, or non-existent. It's not non-existent, but I'm not even going to lie. It's not nearly what I wish it was. And I'm sure not nearly what I wish it, what he wishes it was. The thing is, is that it's purely right now because of time. It's not even so much like a drive thing. Uh, that's been a lot better. It's not like I'm not in the mood. It's that I don't like being interrupted and having a baby is just being interrupted all the time. It's just constant interruption, especially since like right now what happened is, so he's in his crib and we moved him from the Merlin sleep suit. And when we moved him from the Merlin sleep suit, it was like another regression because what's happening is he cannot help it. As soon as you lay him down, he flips to his tummy. And that's fine, they say developmentally that they can sleep on their tummy once they flip they can flip back and forth on their own. I lay him on his back. I wish he would sleep on his back because he sleeps way better on his back, but he just starts flipping over to his tummy. And as soon as he flips over to his tummy, he wakes up because it's like, why am I on my tummy? And it's like, you did this, you did, stop. But he can't stop. And so as soon as he started flipping to his tummy, oh God in heaven, it's been, it's been rough up here in the Robbie De Christie household because he doesn't stay asleep at night anymore. Like he can't stay asleep longer than his sleep cycle because he's waking himself up by flipping. Now he can, but he also is doing this thing where when he flips to his tummy, he wants to sleep face down into the mattress and in his crib, it's just him, his crib, like mattress and the sheet. There's not blankets, there's no bumpers, there's no nothing. And he's in a zippity zip, which is like this uh, approved safe sleep like it's a sleep sack, but basically he can be on his tummy. He can sleep safely on his tummy. It's like a little starfish outfit. And 
I'll tell you what, this tummy flipping time, I have less time than I ever have because he wants to sleep face down. So then I go in there and like turn his head so he can breathe. And it's just, my evenings used to be like, you would put him down and then like every 45 minutes you have to go in there and sometimes soothe him back down. But then you would get like a few hours where he would like sleep and we could like watch a movie or like hang out together. And now because he flips to his tummy and then it wakes him up, I'm in there so much in the evening trying to soothe him back down to sleep. It's just a lot of waking up right now because he flips to his tummy and he's not happy about it even though he's the one that did it he's pissed and he's mad and he wants everyone to know and so um that doesn't leave us much time for things and i don't want to be interrupted that bothers me to think that like we'll be in the middle of something and then i'll hear crying or so a lot of times it's like okay quick we have like five minutes let's go and it's like it's so it's different it's, it's just not where I would like it to be, but I'm also remembering, like everything, that this is a season and that there will be a day again where he's not waking up because he flips on his tummy and he's not, you know, crying to be soothed back to sleep. So I'm just trying to take everything in stride these days and remember that everything is short, everything is a season, and that it won't always be like this, and that I will look back and I'll miss these times. And so that's just kind of how I'm trying to see things. I'm trying not to put too much expectation or pressure on it. Zach and I have had conversations. We do things when we can, and we try to just like have grace with the fact that like, it's just like this right now, and like everything in life, it won't be this way forever. This one says, do you keep up with YouTube drama or are you just like, girl, I'm a mom, I don't care. Mm. So it depends. Uh, I, I probably know 15% of what's going on. 15%. It's certainly not. Like, I do not know the ins and outs of every single thing going on. I am not in the drama. I don't give a shit. There are some of the drama that I am, like, aware of because I follow a few people that have been posting about it on Twitter. I was off Twitter for a long time and even still, I very rarely use the app. So I've seen some of that stuff going on and I've actually even left a couple of comments about it. That so far to me doesn't feel more like as much drama as it is like, I don't know, making people relive their horrific traumas so that you can feel right. That to me is like, what are you doing? Simply stop, stop it. And if that comes to the downfall and detriment of everybody else around you, so that you can what? So, so that what? At the end of the day, you can like be like, see, told you, cool. And I know it's hard for people to admit when they're wrong and when they might be the problem, but like at the same time, when millions of people are telling you that, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but for me, um, maybe shut up. I don't know, there's a point where it starts not feeling like drama and it starts feeling like, I don't know, maybe, bringing up people's trauma and making them relive it over and over and over again for what? For what? Literally for what? So you can clear your name so you feel better about yourself so you could be right? Um, take the L. Half the time when people are like, oh, did you hear about? The answer is no, I didn't. And I don't frankly want to because we all know the beauty community is and can be a source of immense drama and toxicity. How the f heck could I be expected to keep up on all of it? How, how? There's too much and I don't want to. So I just tap out and I'm done. I don't even go on social media. I don't read about the stuff. I don't know about any of it really half the time. And that's just great. So I, I hate that I'm kind of out of the loop, but at the same time when I was fully in the loop and knew everything that was going on at all times, it's just so much. So yeah, the answer to that question is really, I probably know like 20% of it. This question is, how do you deal with people that seem to willfully misinterpret anything you say or do? So this is just a thing on the internet. And I feel like I might respond to it a little bit more than other people, like on my Instagram stories and stuff like that. So it'll seem like maybe I get more people that misinterpret what I say because I give air to it. I want to clear the air because I don't want what I say to be misinterpreted. However, the fact of the matter is when you're on the internet, you will be. It doesn't matter what you say or how much you explain a situation away, you will be misinterpreted beyond what you had planned to like have 
the information out there, somebody's going to take it the wrong way. That's just the way that it is. Uh, people are specifically talking about how I was talking about climate change on my stories. I said something on Twitter about, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the water, like the ocean was on fire uh, because uh, there was an oil spill and it caught on fire, like an, uh, a pipeline exploded and there was an issue. Anyway, I was talking about that on Twitter and how it's just sad that this is all because of money. And then some people took it the way that I was saying, oh, well, the people that work there don't call them pathetic because they have to work for a living. I'd, and then obviously I wasn't talking about individual people. I'm not calling the workers pathetic. I'm not calling that pathetic. I'm saying it's pathetic to me that in this world, the powers that be who have the ability and the knowledge and the technology and are surrounded by the most brilliant scientists in the world who have given alternative sources of energy and fuel are being pushed to the side because of oil executives and lobbyists and people out there that are trying to protect the interest of their shareholders over the longevity of the earth that we live on. And so I'm talking, when I said that, I was talking about, I don't know, corporations, executives, um, lawmakers, politicians. I'm talking about people who have the ability on a scale that would actually make a difference, who are choosing to actively not make a difference because the other option is more profitable. But a lot of people took what I was saying the wrong way. I've just determined, and I've had many a conversation with my husband about this, that there will be people that always misinterpret what you say or want to argue the point. I don't like being misinterpreted. I don't like uh, being misunderstood. And so I tend to explain myself away a lot. Somebody says something to me and I'm like, well, no, no, no. And then I kind of get in like an argument about that. And that's my bad. That's just me always wanting to make sure people know what page I'm on because I don't want somebody being like, well, Christy thinks that people that work on oil rigs are pathetic. No, I just think it's pathetic that like literally currency short-sightedly in our lifetime, like money and billions of dollars are what people see, not people like you, not people like me, people that put laws into action and have the ability to work towards like a more sustainable future for like my child and like your children and your grandchildren like i just hate that like short-sighted profits are put above the environment and like w the ocean is on fire and it was 115 degrees here in washington state record high temperatures for the pacific northwest we've never had temperatures this high in western washington ever in eastern washington sure they can get that high and that's 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 normal because it was like desert temperatures, but like we're in Western Washington, we're talking about record high temperatures. Texas froze. People were freezing to death in Texas. We're not talking about, like it's not, it, it is real and it is happening. And because of the billions of dollars that these companies are making, it, it's not in their interest to give a shit about the environment. It's in their interest to make more money while they can, because while we're here, we're gonna be making all that money. And that's what's really crummy about it. Mm, I just caught a whiff of my deodorant. Still working. Mm, smells good. But I think that's what's really crummy about it is that you can be easily misinterpreted on the internet. And it's something that I don't take well, because I, it, I don't like when people think that I am saying something that I'm not. So I tend to explain things way too much. I tend to defend myself way too much in that regard because I don't want somebody, even one person out there being like, well, Christy thinks I'm pathetic. No, it's not what I was saying. And I want you to know that that's not what I was saying. And it's rough to be misinterpreted, but I can, ex I guess the, the, the reality is, and what I've noticed is I can explain all day long my intention and what I meant and this and the, and there will always be somebody out there who hears it a different way or who disagrees with my take on it. And that's what's really hard is that when you're somebody, if you're somebody like me, you want everybody to like you, but you, it can't. You can't because let's say I follow all of the things, all the criticisms that I get, all of the um, bits of advice that people tell me to do for my videos. You should be like this. You should do this. You should, you should. There will be somebody out there who was like, yeah, but I used to like the way that you, d you did do it. So you changed and now I hate you. So you can't win. You cannot please everybody. And that's what I've had to come to terms with is really tough for me because I am a people pleaser by nature. Like I want people to, 
understand my intent and know that it's all that it's good you know what i mean i want people to know that i'm like i'm not i would never speak that way and i anyway it's really not that big a deal it's really not that deep but it is frustrating because i feel like i'm just somebody that if somebody says like oh well, i hate that you said this i feel like i have to respond because i don't like the idea of that thought process about me out there and i need to that's something that i need to work on i need to work on not caring more i don't care what people think about what i look like let's say but i do care about what people think my intent is and what my heart is because i feel like i'm a pretty good person and i want people to know that but i don't know why i care so much something i need to work on what are your biggest fears in regards to your child growing up in the society we have now i have so many it's hard because there are things that i never thought about in regards to being a parent or having a child until you're in it and then you're like oh how do i navigate that as a parent and i don't know know the answer to those things like I don't know how to navigate a lot of this stuff and a lot of it it's a fear I have um I I I mean I talk about th about this stuff to my husband all the time but basically like I struggle with people like if somebody bullies I can't hand I can't it can't happen so it's not going to be easy for me to relinquish that control in that way and I know I have to allow him to go out into the world and make friends and get hurt and that's going to be really hard for me because he is my heart and soul he is my sun and my stars he is the love of my life and I think that it's going to be really hard to relinquish that control I think that's the thing that I'm most afraid of and also like this the, the other things like okay if you have little kids around right now please um don't let them listen to this okay I, it's not it's about christmas okay so i don't want to ruin anything or have anybody so if you have little kids around take your little kids away i don't want to be the ruiner of anything okay so i'm giving you fair warning three two one talking about santa how do you do santa you know do you do you is it is it lying to your kids is it is it is it making the magic of christmas is it is it giving them a false hope like i don't know any of that stuff you just see what I'm saying? That's the stuff that scares me is I don't know how to parent anymore. I was the best mom in the world. The best mom. Hands down, knew everything, knew how I knew how to parent, knew how to take care of every child until I had my own child. I was the world's best mother. Oh, if I were a mom, I wouldn't blah blah. If I were a parent, I wouldn't. I had all these different I woulds and I wouldn'ts about what I would do when I was a parent. That all went out the window when I see this little guy's face and I'm like, oh, it's not at all just like you can make these, uh, you know, blase statements anymore. It doesn't work like that. So at least for me, uh, I fear a lot of the things I never thought of. Like, how do I instill in him a sense of independence and free thinking while uh, wanting him to pursue dreams and passions, but letting him know that like work isn't everything, but like wanting him to have a good work ethic, but also not caring because working for somebody else isn't gonna bring you, it's not like, to me, like I just, do, I don't know how to navigate it all, but I think I'm just gonna try not to worry about it and just try to, you know, get there as we get there and that's it. Uh, just try to like, you know, I don't know try to just roll with the punches and see how things go but there are so many fears I mean letting go is gonna be the hardest thing for me and like I think the nice thing is is it's gradual you know and they, they do grow up fast but it's very gradual and it's something that you can slowly start to let the tether out a little bit it's not like he's just like off to college when he's two you know like I get to still have him little for quite some time before I have to start relinquishing a lot of control and you know I think that'll be the hardest part for me but you know just it'll be fine I'm sure what is the aspect of motherhood that you didn't expect to be as hard but it is so I asked on Twitter before I had him what is hard about parenting when you say parenting's hard what do you mean and everybody was like it's just constant and I was like okay that is what it's hard there's so many other things that are hard as well just all the decisions you have to make and just like am I doing the right thing and all the mom guilt and all that which is just crippling at times but it's not just that it's it's the constant nature of it you just never get a break and I mean we don't have anyone to take him or help us so it is just us 24 hours a day seven days a week and even if I did have somebody I don't know that I would be able to relinquish that control right now so it's just a lot and while it's a beautiful wonderful like blessing of my life it's really hard to have like zero time for yourself and I do get time but it's not like that relaxing if I'm being honest <laughs> so um it's like in that time I find it to like do the dishes clean up the house like mop the floor take care of the cats like the aspect that's the hardest is 
just the all-consuming nature of it. It is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You get no break. And even when you are separated from them, your brain is not. So it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's very, very much, but it is just so all-consuming and it's just, yeah. So um, I think that's a part that I just didn't expect. I didn't expect that you would get no time to do anything else ever, but you know. It is what it is. Okay, and I feel like that's the amount of questions that I have for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It was really fun to answer some questions. that I've been getting these for a while, but kind of avoiding some of them sometimes because I don't know how to answer them and I don't want to ever come off like, I don't know. I love that feels really good. It's just hard to navigate all of it and know what to do. Um, and I've, you know, sometimes I just avoid questions because I don't know how to answer them correctly. And again, it's that same answer of not wanting to be like, misinterpreted or you know having somebody uh, think that I'm saying something that I'm not and so a lot of times when I answer these questions I feel like I can come off a little bit like mm, and I don't want to come off that way I really I really really love talking to you guys and I really I think that the majority like I'm talking the vast majority like 99% of you guys are just like wonderful and incredible it's just that the 1% feels really loud sometimes and I just you know there was something about after you know after I had my son I've just become so soft in so many ways like I can't even see anything without crying online like I cannot I can't but on the same token, I'm like way more uh, headstrong and I'm more like firm in my convictions and in just how I feel about things. And I'm, I'm way more like assertive as well. I think that's why I just, you know, I don't know, it's just weird how that can change you as a person. Like I've never been somebody like that before. I mean, I'm very, very like, I've, oh, okay, let's, let's try. I'm always very, very outspoken. Like that's how I got my YouTube channel. Like when a brand would do something that I feel like a brand shouldn't do, like I'm out here calling them out left, right and center and I still will, but it is kind of stupid actually when you get so much positivity and it's beautiful and wonderful and then to to focus on that tiny little percentage that's not that's not cool and um you know I think though it's the analogy that I always gave was that if you're at a store working and you have you have 99 customers that are all really really nice to you and then you have one that comes in and is horrific asks to speak to the manager yells at you you go home and you had a bad day you know when somebody asks you how your day went you you mention that customer you don't be like it was a perfect day it was good you remember that because there's something about that negative interaction that just sticks a little bit harder and you remember it a little bit more and it just it's just it's like a damper on all of it like even on the best day you're on vacation and you have like an amazing day at the beach and then you bite into your sandwich and it's rotten on the inside it that moment sticks more than the hours that you had having fun I don't know there's just something about it you know what I mean so I'm not trying to like ever give too much light to that kind of stuff enough to where it stops me from speaking the way that I want to speak on my YouTube channel. I find that it does at times, but at the same token, like, no, I am really trying to, um, just get out of my head with stuff like that and be more open forthcoming and honest. I mean, I'm very open forthcoming and honest. It's like literally what my channel is, but I find sometimes that I can kind of, um, not censor what I want to say, but just like, avoid that topic altogether because I avoid, you know, like that question because I, I don't know how to answer it without making people feel like I'm be being defensive or something. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I'm glad that we sat down today and got ready. I feel like this makeup is nice. It's very, it's understated. It's pretty and it'll work for this hot, hot day. It's not that hot actually. It's only 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a beautiful, beautiful temperature. It was 115 degrees here last week. It was misery you guys like I cannot describe because we don't have air conditioning in Western Washington like it's not really much of a thing some people do but everyone I know doesn't so it's it's a lot more rare to have air conditioning and you couldn't find one they were sold out all over Washington State you couldn't find an air conditioning unit I got one in but it came the day after the heat wave ended we had like three or four days of uh, I think it was like 98 degrees 106 111 and 100 and something I can't remember 115 it was un believable it just does not typically get that hot here and uh oh man it was it was 100 degrees in my house at the end of the night it was just crazy I, I know that it's irritating hearing people talk about like weather but we are not used to that here and it was misery but we're all good now we survived it we got an air conditioning unit and actually in a couple of weeks we have an ac guy coming in to put that in and we're gonna get full house air conditioning because we got a baby now we can't be like 
having it be 100 degrees in here. That's that. Uh, I thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys like this video and like chatting with me. I want to do more of these in the future. I love just sitting down and talking about stuff that I love talking about makeup. Don't get me wrong. I literally love talking beauty, especially these days. Like I'm so interested in trying out new products and trying out different things and like just diving back into makeup has been really really fun and I'm really feeling like I want to like get ready in the day I wish I could just feel more put together on the everyday I wish I was somebody that like woke up in the morning did my hair makeup put on an outfit and like I want to feel like a put together mom priorities I guess <laughs> all right well I thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys like this video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel also if you guys are interested in checking out Schmidt's natural deodorant I'm going to have the link in the description of this video you guys can check down there and uh, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video bye and thank you again so much to Schmidt's natural deodorant for sponsoring this video